<laughs> Let's just get this podcast off on the right Can foot. we? Yeah, before we are. <laughs> There's a fast forward button. <laughs> Can we get to the part where we. All right, welcome everyone. We are back for episode three of Mini Biking Ain't Easy. I'm here as always with producer Zane over here. I got Bernie Man on the cams, Yo. one, two, and threes. And we have a special guest today. We have Evan Nesson Spears. Yeah. So what's up, Evan? How long have you been with uh, Go Power Sports? Actually, I just celebrated my four-year gps birthday on the 14th of january love it thank you and thank i cut you. you off but how are you doing today i'm doing great doing great beautiful yeah. friday it is a little, little tgif action nice so what do you say you do at go mm. power sports well um i am on the sales team i help folks with uh, navigating our website. I help folks find the right parts for what they're building. I give advice, um, both personal and having to do with uh, power sports in general. And, um, you know, live vicariously through others to uh, complete their projects that they call us with. So Very nice. And if you were to say you had an expertise, mm. what would it be? Um, I really am a super vintage mini bike nerd. Mm. It's something that I do like when I'm not at work. Um, I, I'm, I'm involved on a lot of pages on Facebook and stuff like that, and I, something that I know a lot about. So nice. Now, would you say that you have a plethora of mini bikes? Um, so I've a bunch of them have kind of come and gone, but around here, there's kind of like the mini bike nerd click if you will and so everybody kind of knows what each other has and they all kind of trade hands type mm -hmm. deal but as of right now in various stage, uh, stages of completion i've got probably four nice four or right. five I have to, yeah something like that you got a favorite um yes uh where we actually were working on it yesterday but uh i picked up a old crusty knS hornet frame at pates last year uh, it was actually my daughter's first uh, Pates experience. Nice. And uh, she was three at the time. She's four now. And um, I uh, had a goal of restoring it and uh, really kind of pursued that in the last probably month. Uh, sent it off to Powder Coat and got it all done. And we got a few issues to work out, but she's looking good as it sits now and hopefully be completed and ready to rock and roll and be looking real good in about a week. Dang, that's so. what's up. So you got to tell us a little bit about paint. Whenever someone goes to paint, what is paint? Oh, paint, paint, paint. So paint is, for a lot of us, like a, uh, a yearly purge, if you will. Um, imagine like a square mile of flea market, uh, just kind of junk for sale it's really kind of a uh a car guy thing but the mini bikes uh go-karts too but mostly mini bikes have gotten so popular that uh, you see a ton of them out there and um it's also a place where if you're looking for door trim on a 56 buick you can find it there you mm -hmm. know um the people come from all over bring trailers full of junk and uh, that's really my happy place is digging through other people's junk and finding that little diamond in the rough. And, you know, I think we actually have footage. I know at least have some uh, photos of you with this bike mm -hmm. in its crusty form. I yeah. remember you throwing over your shoulder the biggest smile on your face. Oh, and yeah. we were talking about this is your new going to church bike. Well, or yeah, <laughs> I was making jokes. It's a clean one owner, only road to church on Sundays, maybe a little <laughs> Wednesday night Bible study action. I was just spitballing. But what was cool about it is uh, a lot of people will walk by that and be like, oh, somebody dug that up from the bottom of the lake. And I see that and I'm like, dude, it's all there. You got fenders, the brackets are there. 
the things that we're missing is stuff that's easily replaceable, whereas other parts of that bike being so old, you're not going to find OG Hornet fenders anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. you're not going to find those brackets and such. So guys, a lot of times have to kind of just uh, make stuff work. You know what I mean? Kind of make their own stuff to complete it as best they can. But this one was pretty much all there, even as crusty, rusty as it was. So, so did you have an eye? So did you go to page just seeing if there were any just vintage bikes, or were you like K and S Hornet? If I find one, I'm definitely getting it. Mm. So the K and S stuff and the Hornets in particular, always on the radar, always looking for them. Being that they're a Fort Worth based brand, because what's cool about it is there's like regionally you find different stuff in different parts of the country. The guys on the West Coast, you got your Bonanzas, you got you know your yeah your GTS Hobbies frame. Those are kind of newer school, but in like the Midwest, you've got the Rups and you know the Harrisons and things like that. Tote Goat. Uh, there's there's all kind of stuff that's really regional, and for us it's the K and S stuff. So. I'm always looking for something like that, but uh, there's usually just so many different things out there. You kind of find a deal and find something you can shake hands on and go home with it is the plan, but it doesn't always work out. Uh, in recent years, it's turned into sort of what I'd call uh, American picker money where somebody's got a a crusty thing that comes with a free tetanus shot and they want $1,000 for it, and you're just like, you know, man what is this guy on? You know what I mean? But and in the recent years, the prices on these things have just skyrocketed. And I guess it's because of the popularity. Well, I mean, also it's not like they're, they're not making more of them. So well, that's like, also true. The they're, further you get away from right. the manufacture date. But you know, I, I remember what, not too long after working here, you could still go get a, a rolling chassis from somebody for like 150 bucks. You know, those days are long gone. Mm. Yeah. You do your market research now, whether it be on Craigslist, which is kind of a dying deal, or like Facebook Marketplace. I check OfferUp offer up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, OfferUp's a good one. But uh, they do their market research before they post something, and stuff has just added some zeros. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's kind of tough. It's hard out there for somebody who's buying something with the intention of putting more money into it. You know what I mean? You're, you kind of... You, you can't really look at the dollar amount because you're just you're not going to make that move. You know what I mean? Do you think that that's one of the things that scares people off from getting into vintage bikes now or vintage mini bikes? I think so. Uh, I think that a lot of people are frustrated and that they feel like people are asking too much for them. But that's also a really good point that you brought up is they're they're not making any more of them and they haven't in a long time. And uh, the popularity is both good and bad, you know, because the guys who have stuff that they're no longer interested in and you know their momentum is kind of dried up on their intentions on restoring this or doing this with that and they have a lot more of a bargaining chip and a deal to sell something you know wow that old crusty frame that's got an inch of dust on it in the back of my garage now fetches triple what i paid for it why not cash out you know mm -hmm. so because you got dinguses like me paying up for it so <laughs> So for like this bike that you said that you're building, mm -hmm. it's something that is it looks immaculate. Oh yeah. So would you plan on keeping it, or you think is there a dollar amount that you would try to sell it for? Oof. Um, so just like everything else, everything has its price, right? But for me, there's a lot more sentimental in this because you know it was my daughter and I's first daddy daughter Pate's trip, right? And so that was pretty cool, and we found that. And I've got this really rad picture of her sitting on this crusty frame. And what I'm going to do is send that picture over to Walgreens and have it blown up and put in a frame. And I'm going to set it next to this beautiful, completely restored Hornet. And, I, you know, I've seen stuff like that at car shows where some guy buys something from somebody's front yard and, it was sitting on cinder blocks, and now it's like a freaking Barrett Jackson worthy car. And you got the picture of it all before and after. And I just think it'd be really cool to do that with. But it would take a lot for me to sell it. Three thousand dollars. Oh, 
you know that's actually the number that I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> you willing to give it all up for three thousand dollars, dude? Hold but on could I find it. another one? You yeah. know, could you I become part of the system? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm part of the problem. Yeah. But you know, like just like you know, everyone's got their price, and that was like the astronomical amount that I would, because you know, what people are gonna ask me, is it for sale? Is it for sale? And you know, that's just what you do. You ask, and you don't know unless you ask. But I really don't want to sell it. No. I yeah, what I would no. like is for my daughter to get involved in this hobby and be like, dude, my dad is so cool. He has <laughs> all this cool old stuff. You know what I mean? Probably not gonna happen, but well no, it's gonna happen twenty years from now. Mm. So you're like it, she's gonna right. be like, Man, I wish I had been hanging out with yeah. him when he was doing all that. I had no idea how cool my dad was. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I don't know, man. She's uh I don't know. She might get into it. She might not. She's pretty. She's pretty girly. We'll, we'll just have to see. Yeah. But my initial deal is no. I don't want to sell it. I want to keep it and uh, basically preserve it. I actually don't even as clean as it is. I'm terrified of riding it. You oh know my what I mean? Goodness. If I scratch something, that would just be devastating. So, um, if you don't mind asking, why? What is it about the hornet that you like so much? What is it that speaks to you? Uh, a lot of it is the, like I was saying that you'll find more of those K and S products here than anywhere else. And it goes back to the regional manufacturers across the country. But to me, um, I actually growing up a uh, buddy of mine, well, bo both my best friends growing up and I'm talking like first, second, third grade, somewhere in there, their dads bought mini bikes. And, uh, my parents never wanted me on two wheels. You know, a lot of people kind of share that. But uh, they both had Hornets. One was a Super Deluxe, which is the the full suspension model. So it's got like a, a Springer seat on the back. And then the other one is like what I have, where it's the, the hardtail. But they both have these Buckhorn handlebars. And those were the first motorcycles I ever rode as a kid. And then later on, as I got into mini bikes, I uh, realized just how cool those were and that they were a part of local history and we rode the dog snot out of them we were jumping bar ditches with them and just did not treat them right but you know we were kids and you give us motorized something as little boys and you're gonna tear it up that's just part of it but to me it was kind of uh reliving a little bit of childhood even though those bikes didn't belong to me they belonged to uh big zach and cade shout out shout out to you guys and, uh, you know, uh, ever since then, I just have always wanted one, and they were just super cool. Well, we have a surprise because Big Zach and Kate are right here, everybody. No. But, yeah, that's kind of how it all started from uh, from there. And, you know, riding one as a kid and having one as an, as an adult because mom and dad wouldn't let me have one when I was an actual child. So now I'm going to be a 30-something-year-old man-child with a few of them. Because I'm a man, and I make my own choices now. <laughs> Very nice. So we want to invite everyone out to this 2023 paint, mm. which is to uh, April 27th through the 29th, I believe, at the Texas Motor Speedway. Mm -hmm. So I know you'll definitely be out there for that. You have an eye out for another Hornet, or is there another brand of bike you're, you're after? Um, I mean, I have other vintage bikes, but like my, my – uh, my old Sears that, that I have, that or, one's pretty no, cool. No, that wasn't the Roper. What, what, what Sears, which one? Uh, so it's actually like a bird. Okay. Or there's bird industries, but they were basically all these bikes in the 70s you could order from like a Sears Robux catalog. For like 160 bucks, they ship it to your door, you know, which is crazy, but uh, yeah. A different time. <laughs> different time. But yeah, really, I like the more obscure stuff. Um, there's not really one in particular, but they all have kind of their own vibes to them. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's really cool. My thing is I want something that not everyone has. And around here, everyone goes after the Hornets, and I'm like, I have, you know, two of them right now. Nice. But, you know, it's just kind of you go based on feel because mm -hmm. there's a lot out there, and you got to – if you're going to throw your money at something, you want something that really sticks out to you. But if I had the cash in my pocket and something came along, yeah, I'd probably drag it home. Yeah. 
Um, if you don't mind, so you said that was there a, a period where you weren't doing any mini bike stuff? Because it sounds oh, like yeah. you and your buddies were messing around on them when you were kids. Oh yeah. So how did you end up getting back into mini biking? Well, um, you guys got time for a Let's short story? Oh, okay. please do. All right. So, like most of my life, this is actually a pretty kind of can I can I say white trash on here? Can I? Sure, I guess. It's kind of a white trash story. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. going to it's going to come off that way, okay? No, go for it, man. Okay, so I was dating my now wife, but we were dating at the time, and I'm a big rock and roll fan. And so I had kind of nest egged a little cash that I was going to use to buy Kiss tickets, okay? Cuz I like I like Kiss, you know, I like all things rock and roll. But I was like, we're going to kiss. It's going to be so sick. And she's like, yeah, okay. And uh, then I found out that, like, Gene wasn't going to be there, that Ace wasn't going to be there. Like, it was like a, a cover band. Ew. Yeah. So I was like, ew. That's, I could go to a local sports bar and get that. Like, yeah. why would I do that? I want to see the real deal, man. Like, so these guys aren't going to be around forever. Paul Stanley and three randos, yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Paul was actually going to be there, yeah. So I was like, okay. Uh, so not doing that. So now I had this, like, I think it was like 180 bucks that I had, like, burning in my pocket. And I was flipping through Facebook Marketplace, and I was like, oh, some kid down the street selling a mini bike. And it was a, uh, a DB30 doodle bug. And he wanted, like, 180 bucks for it. And I was like, um, so I did a thing. I went down the street and I gave this kid $180 and I got this bike. And then I got on YouTubes and was like, okay, this thing's kind of cool. And then I figured out that everyone's putting 212 CC motors on them. I was like, so that's rad. And then from there it just snowballed. And then my best bud, Jimmy got one. Uh, my buddy Andrew got one, you know, it turned into a whole thing. Right. And we were up here all the time, and uh, it, it turned into uh, a pee-in contest, man. Like, you know, oh, I'm faster than you. I'm like, yeah, not for long, dog, because I'm going up there to get some parts. And, you know, it just turned into uh, adults playing on mini bikes in uh, a, a neighborhood not far from here. And most people are probably laughing at us, but we felt really cool, so who cares, right? But you found a thing you enjoyed, man. Yeah, like, and then so my thing is like I, I, I when I find something that I like, I like hyper fixate on it, and so I started just nerding out like knob to eleven, and uh, just got all into it, dude, and been helplessly addicted ever since. So I remember back in those days when you and your crew would walk in, yeah, and you guys were always a hoot. You guys yeah. were always fun to be around. You guys would show up to all the mini bike meetups mm -hmm. with your thrown together trikes and i think andrew had like a he had like a motorcycle it was like a small motorcycle yeah. with like the foot brake and all yeah. that and it was like a chinese chopper that yeah. we just cut up and welded stuff to and quickly got out of control those were some good times for they sure. were a lot of fun yeah is that so that this bike was then kind of your your reason to start coming to go power sports absolutely oh yeah. man and then it was really cool, and a, and a lot of people around here have the same story because we're like, man, there's all this stuff online about this, and come to find out, world headquarters for mini bikes is a couple miles down the road. Mm. What are the chances, right? I was like, this has got to be divine intervention, you know? So quickly got involved with that, and then it turned into like, hey, will you guys hire me? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And that was four years ago. You got any more of the mini bike parts? <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting outside the door. You know, they're like, hey, is, is that guy going to go home? Or No, but, no the, but everyone here, you know, starting out with Jason and Taylor and Tim and Dave and Aaron, like all those guys were super a big part of me getting into this. And um, it obviously changed my life. I'm on a Go Power Sports podcast right now. So that's yeah. pretty rad. So the first bike you showed up with, I thought was your your girlfriend now wife's uh, mm -hmm. bike. What, what what bike was that? Was that was a uh, Manco Streaker. That's what it was. Ah, yeah, shouldn't have got rid of that one. That was a cool one. Mm -hmm. We put we put her a little cute little basket on the front of it. Yeah, 
And on Big Trash Day, me and her would go ride the neighborhoods and find stuff that people were throwing out and put it in her little basket. <laughs> it's a, it was a whole deal. But yeah, so she got involved, and then uh, we were expecting my daughter, and she stopped riding mini bikes like a loser. But <laughs> apparently, doing that pregnant isn't really a good idea. Mm. But whatever. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. We're going to take it to the to the announcements, and we'll be right back. Hey, guys, it's Paul from Better Call Paul. Today I'm here to talk about the pros and cons of the Tillotson Racing Road. So we'll start off with the cons. None. We're done. Let's go to the pros. Pros of this oil, it does have both steps of the oil that you need, the break-in and the regular. If you're starting with a brand new engine from a fresh build, use the break-in oil. If you use the break-in oil, I have seen much better ring seal with using this before going straight into the regular oil. This oil has excellent protection against wear, foam, and corrosion. It isn't a multi-viscosity oil, but it does have low temperature properties, so when it is cold outside, you're not gonna get that dry start. It has good thermal and oxidation anti-wear properties. The biggest issue with these engines is, since this is a tappet style engine, it has to have that extra anti-wear additives in it, otherwise metal to metal contact happens and the motors wear out really fast. This oil is 100% synthetic and it's designed, like I said, 100% for these engines. Keep them cool, run at higher RPM. Most of my racing guys are running this oil and all of last year, all my motors that ran just this, zero issues. All right guys, well that's about it. This is the uh, Tillotson Racing Oil Collection. You can get this on our website, gopowersport.com. And don't forget, you better call Paul. And we are back. All right, so yesterday you were into your Hornet build, mm. which looks beautiful, beautiful paint job. Do you want to go into that? What uh, kind of power unit are you running in it? What kind of troubles are you running into? Mm. What can we do to help you out? Like, tell me about your build. Okay. Um, we, I decided that I wanted to restore this thing because as we were talking about earlier, it, it was all there. So what we did is had it sandblasted and powder coated. And for anyone that knows anything about powder coat, it's just a superior way to change the color of anything. I mean, the powder coat, I've done rattle can jobs and you know, you get your beautiful rattle can job done and you go to put fuel in it and a little bit spills and like ruins your paint. It's a way to have a bad day. Yeah. But you know, powder coating is just a, a really durable way to get some really sick paint on a, on a piece of metal. And um, so we did that and I had this idea because I'm sort of a vintage purist. I really, it, and I'm, I don't want to offend those who get these vintage bikes and cut them all up and do all this. Like, you do you, man. It's your bike. You do what you want. It's America. But, yeah. It's free country mostly. <laughs> but for me, I die a little inside when someone takes a really clean vintage and cuts it up and does all kind of monstrosities to it. So what I wanted to do was get it as close to original as possible, but have like, a, I guess I would call it like a resto mod, like a modified restore, right? So I wanted a really rad paint job where people were like, that's Evan's bike, dude. Ain't nobody got that color but him. The universal tires, that tread pattern was on like every vintage bike made in the 70s. And so I wanted to do it up as close to original as possible. And I think when we unveil this beauty at the Starbird show, that people are going to see that, that, uh, wow, this guy like tried to do it as close to OG as he could with having some new school kind of personalization to it, you know? So I got a really cool seat made by our awesome seat guy. Uh, some tuck and roll action, you know, some different, I got like a glitter top on it and stuff i just kind of wanted to be og original with some 
with a little salt bay on it. Right. You know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. I like that. You're maintaining the soul of this thing mm -hmm. while also right. adding your own little touches. Right. Yeah. So that's pretty much it on that. Have we talked about the color on this? Because I, I really want that blue. Yeah, it's blue like a green is it's just... like a metallic teal. Oof. We were joking yesterday. I don't, I don't remember what exactly. I, I said it's somewhere between like a mermaid's tail yep. and live, laugh, love. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you said. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> you know, I was like the turquoise crosses and okay. say like live, laugh, love. Okay. <laughs> My mom's got one at her house. I don't know. We'll cut to that footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll get a picture of it. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah. No, but uh, it was just a really cool color. And I wanted something that would be like that someone in the late 60s or 70s would think was cool. So, like, y'all's grandma probably had a Cadillac that was real similar in this color. You know what I mean? Like something that's just was kind of, bam, kind of loud, but at the same time, was a what I would consider like a vintage color, something that you don't really see. What's cool is all that stuff is full circle and has come back into being popular now. Yeah. So, oh yeah, a lot of the old school stuff has come back to being pretty mainstream. So, I was gonna be honest when I saw that. Uh, I actually, um, in my hobby, I, I did a, a paint job on things that was a very similar paint scheme mm. to that. I love that color. It's yeah, it's like I don't know it just exactly good, what dude. it's called, but sexy. That's what we can call it. Yeah. So I, I told Taylor, I was like, so this is what I'm going for, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, I want it to have some flake in it, but I want it to be, like, kind of a, a different color. Because you got your standard red, your fire engine red. A lot of guys do blue and stuff like that. Is I just that wanted something yellow, to kind right? of separate it off. Yeah. And then I got that HS40 engine off some guy online, and it was – immaculate like he had already done all the legwork for it so i can't take any credit for that motor because he did it and he did this really nice uh silver paint to it and they usually came in either like a black uh for the later model stuff and the really early stuff was all white and uh i thought that silver was just really cool and it was just a blank slate they didn't have the uh any sort of logo on it or anything but the pipe was there, and any anyone that knows anything about Tecumseh's, like, those those headers are really hard to find because most of them are so rusted through, they're just useless. I didn't want to go get, like, a tractor supply, freaking thread-on piece of junk, you know? So it was all there, and I wanted to kind of tie everything together and just be creative with it and make it all pop. And I think the masses are going to like what – what we came up with and it was a team effort it wasn't just me i had the original idea but everyone here uh has helped me get this together man and like just like right now like yesterday i something i didn't realize is that the the crankshaft on that motor wasn't drilled and tapped and to run a torque converter you have to have that you can't do a set screw like a clutch mm -hmm. so we have this guy here i call him machinist mike he is pretty much a wizard without a beard yeah <laughs> and uh he's like oh yeah it's no big deal i'll drill and tap that for you and everything i'm like man thanks dude like you know it's just everyone has come together and uh really helped me to make this happen man so so things like that so the engine not how you thought it was going to be it's mm -hmm. not going to be an easy right. bolt-on type of kit what other walls have you been hitting with this because you mm. and taylor spent all day yet yesterday yeah. building it you it's rolling mm -hmm. but what are some complications you run into yeah so when we say mini biking ain't easy that's a fact jack Very true. that's the name of the show because i mean you could have everything laid out like we did man and like all the all the ingredients right but when you go to put it all together it doesn't always just fall together right so there's little little things little discrepancies that are just gonna kind of throw a little wrench in the fan and part of the fun in doing this stuff is you have to adapt and overcome and you have to problem solve and people are like what it's a mini bike dude it's a metal frame with four bolts for the motor and you hook a chain to it and you take off there's a lot more to it than that you know especially when you're trying to recreate something that hasn't been made in 40 plus years yeah so some of the problems I had was on this engine, the the air cleaner or the filter uh, is going to hit my jack shaft. And on the Hornets, the jack shaft 
is a little small there's a little small drum that goes onto the shaft and then you have a brake band that goes around that and as my motor sits now when i mocked everything up the air cleaner is hitting that uh that drum so i was like no <laughs> so like this no you know what i mean yeah. but you can't get you can't get too worked up about it you got it sometimes and this is when you're working on anything sometimes you have to take a step back take a deep breath say a couple of woo saws and then you reassess the problem and you figure it out and so we've already got a game plan to tackle that i'm gonna take that air cleaner and i'm gonna flip it around so now I'm going to clear that. The other issue was my gas tank. The Tecumseh's had a couple different options. One would be it was offset where the filler cap to put your fuel in would be offset to clear the frame of the bike. So with mine, as it sits now, the gas cap is directly underneath the frame. So I can't even put gas in it right now. So we're going to have to go to the drawing board and either modify the bracket or come up with something to get that gas cap to where it's basically in between the two backbones of the frame so that I can access it. But other than that, uh, everything went together pretty smooth. Okay. So it, this, this one isn't as hard as other ones, but it's almost a guarantee that every time you're doing something like this, I mean, we run into it with kits and stuff, and, you know, it, you have to... I think that's part of the fun is it's more of a puzzle than you would think it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you got to bust out the grinder. Sometimes you got to, you know, put an extra washer here or there to make things work. And that's part of the fun of it because it wouldn't be that fun if it was just slapped together like, well, that's done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's got to be an experience for you to really enjoy it, I feel like. I'm glad that you're able to reach a little bit of adversity. I mean, I know that stinks and you didn't get hey. it done. But now when people call in, they can then draw on your experience and what you had to do. So adversity in this point really helps us out as customer service, as who's supposed to be a mini bike mm -hmm. guru and a go-to shop for these questions. That's mm -hmm. awesome that they can call you and pick your brain. You'd be like, hey, this is what I did. I even got it on video if you're trying to check it out. There you go. That is huge for the program because we do get a lot of that. Hey, I ran into this, blah, blah. And it's so cool to be able to call somewhere. And they're like, whoa, this dude has actually done what I'm trying to do before. And he's not blowing smoke at me. He's actually talking straight fire. Yeah. And he's spitting out, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take that, flip it around. Uh, no, you need to bleed your brake from the caliper to the master cylinder, not the other way around where everyone else teaches you or things like that that only experience can tell you. So that's something that's really cool about this company that I don't think anyone else is offering. You can call True. up there and get, you know, either get myself or somebody else on the line who's actually done this stuff before. And I'm not Googling your answers for you when you're calling me. You know yeah. what I mean? This is stuff right out of the vault. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Because there's a lot of companies out there that are just a warehouse, mm -hmm. and you just buy what's online. If it don't fit, it don't fit. I'm sorry. Yeah. But you can give us a call, and we can actually help you out, which is Right. Yeah. yeah. So good so, job. Yeah, that's awesome. And it, it's the best part about this job is exactly that, being able to help somebody. And uh, the, there's so many cases that come up because you, I mean, four year, well, really like three years of being on the phone. That's a, that's a lot of conversations with a lot of people mm -hmm. on any given day. I've talked to, you know, 40 to 60 people a day. You know, I feel like that's a pretty conservative number and uh, each has their own deal. Some of them are real easy questions, but some of them are pretty difficult where it may take a few days to resolve. And uh, just over the years, the the memories of those who I've helped out over the phone, and I feel like I have a relationship with even, you know, because the, they're always repeat customers. Yeah. We have so many regulars who call up here all the time, and whether it's the talk shop, which we, you know, we try to keep to a minimum, because there, there is such a high call volume and such, but those who have called back and like, hey, dude, I did what you told me to, and it worked out beautiful, and just thank you so much. Like, just that, yeah. someone calling back and acknowledging, like, hey, man, you helped me out of a sticky situation trying to play with this thing and totally made the experience worth it. Like, that right there is what it's all about for me. Nice. So, 
It feels really good. You go home and you're like, I helped someone today. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what did you do in your day, wife? You know, the, you know, uh, just watch the yeah. two year old. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but we, you know, we just had a good time with it. And a lot of these guys know me on a personal level, and it feels cool to to be important. You know what I mean? To have someone call and be like, oh, no, I, I want to talk to that dude I've been talking to because we got something cooking right now, and I wouldn't want to see it through. But yeah, that's probably my favorite part about it. I was actually I was curious. Um, do you do you remember the first time that someone called and you were like like a wizard? You pulled out the answer and gave yeah. it to them, and then they call back and we're like, ah, it worked. Yeah, um, actually, one of my favorite stories ever. There was a there was a kid, and he was from like a literal child. Like I, I'm guessing he's probably like seven or eight. Maybe nine. I don't know. I'm bad at that kind of stuff. He did not have a man's voice yet. Mm. He was still a child. And he was from the Northeast. Uh, I believe it was Boston. And he's like, yo, my go-kart, this, that, and the other, you know. And uh, uh, he's like, my go-kart won't run for anything. And and at this point, we had already sent him a new carb, thinking that, I, I don't know, he's a kid. He may have messed something up on a carb. And out of a courtesy, we, you know, we had sent him a carb. And... uh he uh, he calls back and he's like, I'm still having issues with this thing. And I said, Well, I think it was the uh, it was winter time. And I said, uh, Well, where are you getting your gas? Like, I'm wondering if he's got his dad's old gas can and he's like putting bad gas into this thing or something. I said, So where's your dad getting your gas? And there's a <laughs> there's a pause on the phone. He goes, The friggin' gas station. What do you think? <laughs> I said, Touche. You know, all right, you got me, you got me there. I said, okay. I said, well, here's the deal, though. This is a small engine. And then after talking to a couple of the guys in the shop trying to get this figured out, because we are a team in there. Like, when something comes up like this when we're stumped, we have each other to kind of lean on and to get advice from. I don't remember who I was talking to. I want to say it was probably Aaron. But he was like, well, if he's up in the Northeast and they're getting it out of a – out of pump gas, there's a problem they have up there where the condensation, because obviously underground where these tanks are, it is warmer than it is outside. So you take a uh, like a cup of water and you put it in a warm place and, you know, it's cold outside. There's condensation that builds up. So through that condensation, it was enough water in his gas to where his little motor wasn't running right. And we freaking cracked the case on it. And I was like, dude, so you need to put some sort of fuel treatment in there, like Stabil or whatever it is, and then you'll be good to go. Well, he he calls back and uh, can you? I sure. Okay. He, so I, I can it, always bleep it if you want. Okay. To. So he's like, he calls back and he's like, hey, I did what you told me, and now my go karts run like a wicked pisser. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, there you go, buddy. And do you like apples? Yeah. How about them? <laughs> yeah. No, he was great, man. And I'll never forget that kid. Yeah. Because it was so cool. And uh, Bostonian kid, if you're listening, we hope that that yeah. start Shout or that, uh, yeah. that mini bike's still working for you. Yeah, dude. That 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 one stuck with me because it was it was obviously funny, but at the same time, it was like he had, he took the time to call back. He's like, "Yo, that worked." You know what I mean? But and that's what's so cool about it is because I talked to people from all over the place, man. It's everywhere. And uh, you know, I, I I've had several of them that that I keep in the the old memory bank. But that one probably my favorite. Mm. So let's take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. All right, so this Hornet bike, you said it might be done in a week. Hopefully. You're going to unveil it at the Daryl Starbird Hot Rod Sh and Custom Show. Yeah. February 17th. Mm -hmm. So are you going to then place this at the Pool Start Picnic in May? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
So the Pull Start Picnic basically is going to be a best-in-show mini bike show. We're going to have it held at Rockwood Go-Karts out in Fort Worth. Represent. This will be May 20th, a Saturday from 10 to 4 p.m. I'd imagine you are going to be our resident host. Sweet. Looking you forward got, to that. You got the voice for it. You're already our host for the GPS 180. That's so much fun, dude. And you'll probably help judge. But uh, So, yeah, tell me a little more about this Pull Start Picnic. Well, I don't know. Um, so the whole thing started, I guess, it was me, my boy Bernie, and Tater, Taylor. And we all went to La Crescenta, California. It's L.A. area. County. L.A. County. And, uh, and we went to Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. And if if you're a mini bike nerd out there, you know Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. Like, that is – I feel like every mini bike nerd needs to make that trip at least once. The pilgrimage. The pilgrimage, Yeah. It's like mini bike mecca, right? <laughs> Once in your lifetime, you got to go. It, I, I can't say enough about it. it. You go there, and it's like this beautiful park, because obviously it's California, so it's like 70 degrees every day. It's ridiculously awesome. But the who's who of mini bikes is out there, man. You got all these top-notch builders that are just doing crazy stuff. And... uh Beautiful vintage stuff, custom stuff, etc. It was a whole experience. Like it's months later, and I'm still riding on that cloud. You know what I mean? Like it was so cool. Got to shake hands with a lot of guys that I've become friends with online and stuff like that who were in the community. And uh, we all were talking like, man, we need something like that here. We're not trying to steal Joe's thunder because you can't. First of all, it's Joe, the dude's a marketing genius and uh just has resources to make most anything happen i don't know if y'all know a whole lot about joe but he's also on the board with sema which is we've all heard of sema yeah that gives you the kind of caliber that that guy is but we wanted something similar that we don't have to drive for 27 hours to get to and uh we, I feel like we have enough of a following here where we can make something like an annual event that might turn into something really cool. And so we talked about it basically on and off the whole time home and on the way out there even. And uh, I, I remember pulling Jason aside and saying something about it. And I was like, dude, we got to do something, but we got to get it going now so that people have time to prepare and such. But all that aside, it's basically our version of, of a, uh, a who's who in our area. And it's not like a competition more of, it's more like any car show. It's a bunch of nerds getting together talking about what they nerd on, you know what I mean? And we all know what each other has and stuff like that, but it's a, I guess it would be a really cool way to invite more people to get involved and to grow this thing, you know? Whenever you brought that idea, it was something that was already there mm. We've all attended, you know, Joe's mini bike reunion. And then when you said it was so much passion, it like fueled me. Mm. And then I was just up all night, like, all right, what are we going to call this? How are we going to get all these people in there? Is this even doable? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's doable. It's doable. We're in the, we're in a central location. Mm-hmm. We can reach the East Coast, the West Coast, the Northern states, mm-hmm. you know, Michigan, California, Florida, everybody. We have an outreach already to invite people, we have the location to do it. Mm-hmm. So your little spark, your little passion mm. fueled me, and I've just been in a rage the last few weeks to make this show happen. I got my artist coming up with design work. We got the place all laid out. <clears throat> We've already got people contacted to be guest judges. Nice. Uh, so I am stoked. That's all I've been thinking about these last few weeks. So I want to thank you for instilling Dude, that passion into me. All that is, someone told me something. And I actually used this in my interview at Go Power Sports when I was talking to Tim and Dave. It's a transfer of enthusiasm. Oh, for sure. Hands down. Bigger. Dude, it's transfer big. Transfer of enthusiasm. Yeah. I like that. Oh, that's all sales is, yeah. Zane. It's a transfer of enthusiasm. You want to buy something from somebody that's not enthusiastic about what they sell? Mm-hmm. No, no, you don't. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So, so. so is there anything else outside of mini bikes that you're enthusiastic about? Yeah. I tell folks all the time, part of the reason I'm into mini bikes it's because I don't have that hot rod scratch. You know what I mean? Mm. For what you spend to build a mini bike, you can't do jack 
to a <laughs> an actual licensed vehicle. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Especially with the way things are now. We were talking about that. You can find an old crusty C10 on cinder blocks, and they want 20 Gs for yeah. it. And you're like, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's just. But there's something smaller. And what I like to also compare it to is like uh, as a kid, I like to build models and stuff. Mm. And these are like live action models that you can actually play with and you can ride well, when you're done. What kind of models were you into? Like car models and okay. stuff. But yeah, I'm into cars. Um, basically anything with an engine. I'm into motorcycles, all that stuff. And all that, all this stuff kind of goes hand in hand, man. And what's really cool is a lot of these car shows are, are becoming more and more accepting of these mini bikes and I've actually seen, because I, I go to the Pistons and, and Paint Show every year mm -hmm. in Denton. And that's a really cool one. I believe it's anything 1964 and below is welcome at the show. So it's all just old stuff. You don't have the guys showing up with their Volkswagen rabbits and whatever it is, you know, the the lawnmower fart can engines and stuff like that. This is all old school stuff. And a lot of guys will have like their... 55 Chevy stepside pickup with a matching paint mini bike in the back. I'm like, dude, ultimate flex, right? That's what's up. Ultimate. And uh, so a lot of it's kind of hand in hand, man. And so it's just something, uh, a hobby that I've always wanted to do that's a little more attainable, a little more affordable than getting into hot rods, you know? Mm. If you could get any car. Like let's say let's say tomorrow someone was like on Facebook Marketplace and was like I just need it out of my house. Yeah, trade me one restored Hornet mini bike for this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what car would it be? Boy, that's tough. Um, I like I like uh, the '50s era cars, and without getting too into it to get off subject, but to me they have curves in feel and souls they got curves like a woman you know what i mean like you know it's a big body car with two plush couches in it and a giant steering wheel because you don't have any power steering and stuff like that but i, I it would be something along those lines and my, growing up my uncle has a uh, 67 malibu my uncle mike he's a really cool guy he's been up here a couple times but he, he sold that car off and when i was little I've been to his house a couple of times when I was little and seen it, and I was like, man, it's so cool. There's a 67 Malibu, I think, with the 396 in it and the four-speed Muncie, and it was just really rad. But honestly, I like them all. My answer would be uh, the car that I could afford would be the one that I, that I would pick. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. And I haven't found that car yet. But. Mm. If you could bring a project car to Paints and Pistons, what would it be? Mm, I really like the old C10s. I, uh, my first truck ever was a 1968 GMC, and I remember having to push that thing down the road and start it up because they had, like, long tube headers and the glass packs that were already blown out. I had to push it down the road and start it up when I was sneaking out going to chess tournaments <laughs> and whatever else we were doing. <laughs> Bible study. Bible studies, <laughs> things of that nature. Kiss concerts. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome, bro. Um, uh, I got nothing. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. Then uh, actually, let me let me go to my question bank. Um. Okay, so two other things that you have mentioned when okay. we've been talking. I know that you're a fan of fishing. Oh, big time. Yeah. Big time fisher. Mm -hmm. Every uh, chance I get. Okay. Yeah. Um, the tug is the drug. There you go. Nice. Yeah, um, I can't take credit for that. I've heard it somewhere <laughs> on YouTube, but, but it stuck with me. I heard it somewhere else, but in a different context. Right. Yeah. Go into that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. Can we do that on the? We'll do that on. I mean, go like power sports after, after hours. hours. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. You guys were already talking about it before. After we dark. Rolling. Right. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. So. A lot of that has to do with, I used to make bad choices and I'm trying to make good choices. And one thing that kind of um, is therapeutic for me is to go out there and try to catch a largemouth bass. 
and it's specifically large I mean, I fish for other things too. Me and my buddies, you know, I like crappie fishing and stuff like that. Local fish around here. But there are so many like uh, HOA ponds around here that have just giants in them that no one ever fishes. And so really therapeutic for me to uh, go out there by myself in the quiet. And it's just me and a potential fish to bite my lure, whatever it is. Mm. It's exhilarating. People don't get it. And I, I've i taken people out with me. And, of course, they don't catch anything. So it's like, I promise, dude, it's fun. I promise. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it just doesn't always work out that way. But, man, when I say the tug is the drug, that is the deal. Like, that is just as exhilarating to me as finding that uh, rusty gold it pays. You know what I mean? It's kind of something. So as long as my wife allows it, I spend probably like, and the weather permits, I probably fish like, I don't know, conservatively like three, four days a week for a couple hours after work. Maybe nice. maybe squeeze in a little couple hours before work type deal. Whoa. Like I said, I hyper fixate on stuff, guys. So yeah, that is something that in the last couple of years I've really just helplessly addicted to as well. So it's kind of a, it's a meditative in a way. Too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Do you mm. get the same thing when you're working on mini bites? I do, I do. Mm. Yeah, just the same way. I'm like, there's a bass sitting underneath that log over there, and to throw your lure over there, make it do its little dance, and then feel the do 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 on your line, and you set that hook. The same feeling, the same high that I get shaking hands and making a deal with somebody on a new project you know what i mean like it's that same fire that's lit you know so gotcha. that's just me personally nice yeah okay, nice man yeah i jason outside of mini biking what do you find Ooh. to give you that dopamine <clears throat> i love taking photos of mini bikes and i love i love speed and i love cameras i love mm -hmm. videoing like today, we showed uh, Flacco on our drag bike, mm. and just being next to that engine whizzing by as I'm just high shutter speed, just trying to capture him. Mm. Whenever I go back, even though I have like 800 photos, I just skim through them real fast. I'm like, if I can just find one of just Jimmy just flying by and it just yeah. it's in perfect sync, that's my drug. That's me uh, getting that there bass on there. That's the one. Yeah, I so, can see that. So that's my thing. Luckily. Uh, both my jobs and both my passions go, it's, it's, uh, they coincide with each other. Many bikes going fast and, and, and taking photos of it. I'm willing to bet there's not a lot of guys in this world that have that. And that's, that is a beautiful thing. Yeah. That really is. I think there's a lot of people go their entire life trying to find something that they can care about in that mm. way. And a lot of people, they, they, they find themselves disappointed in what life has to that offer because they don't find a thing. Yeah. You know? I think the whole superficial world and these expectations and stuff and, People say to pursue your dream and do what makes you happy, but sometimes doing what makes you happy doesn't pay the bills. But when you can get those two things to align, mm. wow, that's a that's feeling. a rarity. Yeah, I, definitely. I and I fit into that bracket as well, man. Yeah. I, I'm a former customer who begged him enough to give me a job, and <laughs> now it's I feel like I'm part of the GPS family, man. Oh, you you know, know what I mean? For sure. And it, it really is a family. I know, that, like companies are like yeah we're a family and instead of a instead of a raise this year we're throwing you a pizza party <laughs> you know what i mean like that's not what families do <laughs> families take care of each other yeah. with sometimes having pizza parties yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know no but it is actually a family here like i can go into my boss's office and like have a heart to heart about something or you know what i mean like i i trust these people you know and so it's really rad to be a part of that and the the magnitude in which my life has changed in the last four years is really incredible. And I owe all of it, most of it, if not all of it, to Go Power Sports. Mm -hmm. I really do. We truly are lucky just to be able, like, I try to think of it as, you know, people look back on their time and like, oh, remember those days? I'm like, mm. right now, like, I feel like we're in our heyday where it's tons of fun. Right. I have my friends who are around the same age mm. who love the same things that I do. We're all working together. We all get to hang out together. Mm. I kind of don't want this era to end. I don't right. want to grow up. I kind of want to stay in this pocket for as long as possible because I'm having so much fun hanging Dude. out with y'all. Yeah. We got to find a way to keep that magic alive. For decades forever yeah and you know 
at the end of the day, a job is a job. And there's things about your job that you don't like or things that are, you know, there's trials and tribulations. But as long as we can keep that mindset, I think that's key. Yeah. To -hmm. keep that mindset that, you know, yes, right now you had a bad day. You had someone and, you know, contrary to popular belief, sometimes you can't make everyone happy. You know what I mean? And there's there's going to be those hard cases, whether it's with customers or whatever, or coworkers or whatever, where there's a clash. You know what I mean? And to get past that and say, hey, you know what? It's been a rough week. Let's pull start them and just go cruise or something. Or let's go do whatever as a company outing. Let's go hit some golf balls and, you know what I mean? Or whatever. And so that is a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. And I think that we're we're a growing company, ever grow I mean, in the last four years since it's I've been, been here, dude, it has been wild yeah. how fast it's grown and how much everything has changed. And it still is a what I would consider like a mom and pop shop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where we're we're still very close knit. You're not an employee number, you're a name. Yeah. You're a name with a a vital role on this ship that we're sailing on man and everyone's got their job and if everyone pulls together and does their thing then who knows the places will go you know what i mean so that's that's really cool to be a part of that and i'm eternally grateful for that nice well evan i want to thank you so much for coming on to the podcast with us and hanging out and just sharing your story because i mean i know you but it's good just to have a one-on-one talk and just to Mm. get to know your your passions your history and whatnot so Thank you for all that you do for the Go Power Sports team. I love laughing with you, seeing mm-hmm. it as we walk by. So thank you, and uh, see you next time. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes. Hey, cool. Mom. <laughs> he, he made it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on <all> TV. <laughs> <laughs>